So last couple days of the diet have been pretty darn not easy feeling. So yeah, I do feel like balls today. I am getting a little bit nervous, but I had abs for the first time in like four years this morning. So we are freaking doing it. And had Buddy slide into my Instagram DMs this week with a pretty unique sumo deadlift start position cue. So we're gonna give that a whirl. I wanna try it before I talk about it in case it really doesn't pan out. He might have been onto something. And in case you guys haven't figured it out yet, what I'm trying to do right now is put downwards pressure into the bar as I'm getting set, help me pack in tighter, and then I'll transition that into the slack pull before actually doing the deadlift. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. I think we might have to do a little FAFO again. I mean, with how the last few weeks of deadlift training have looked, I might as well just lie to myself and pretend I was supposed to be doing a wave of flat-loaded singles. Yeah, still very optimistic. But, unlike last week, I'm not gonna allow that optimism to cause me to get ahead of myself. And I'm actually gonna make semi-intelligent jumps. I'm confused. And I think what's happening there is like the push down is letting me use my upper back strength to my advantage for the first time ever on a sumo deadlift. So slightly less intelligent jump coming up. Guess not. I'm gonna pretend that last one didn't happen and try something slightly different. Now. And I think like the fuck up is that the weights in the not missing sumo range feel so much better than they have that with each like positional improvement, I keep on thinking like my top end must be going, my top end must be going off and I'm just taking two non-telling jumps to the top sets. But you know what, whatever, we're, I'm kind of, Okay with that. Not super okay, kind of okay. So, yeah, stiff legs. And after those sumos, I might have to try to not be a pansy and actually work up here. Yeah, that's okay enough for today. So one plate felt much more terrible than I wanted it to, so we'll see how two goes. And I don't know, gonna try to make this look less terrible. Yeah, we don't have much juice right now. 
but I know why I don't have a lot of juice right now. And even if I'm not okay with it, I'm at least understanding of the circumstances that I have placed myself in with this cut. And with how I feel, I don't feel like setting up Nordic, so we're gonna run GHRs. With the pad stuffed pretty forward for the dorks in the Instagram comments. And like, it is a lot closer to a Nordic, but it still isn't quite the same. And like, even if I didn't have it set up like knees on top, it would be really freaking hard. But like the femur tibia shear just wouldn't be the same because of the drop that's going to be inevitable with the round pack. And I'll knock her one forward. Kind of afraid that I'm about to eat my words here. Yeah, still much better than a Nordic. And I think you can kind of bring the GHR Nordic crossover back to a pull down chin up because a pull down can help build stronger lats, which can work towards chin ups, but you're not going to get good at chins unless you actually do chins. Warm up set, body weight incoming. And when I say that a GHR isn't a good Nordic builder, I'm not saying that a GHR isn't good for the hamstrings. I'm just saying that the direct translation to a Nordic isn't really there because the limiting factor of a Nordic is going to be so freaking different than a glute ham raise. Also, I have no idea where to start if I'm going to start loading these, so we're grabbing the pink kettlebell. Surprised with how good that felt. And I didn't even look beforehand, but this thing's apparently 18 pounds, so tempted to get a little bit ambitious. By ambitious, I mean I'm gonna try hanging the plate from my junk. And what I'm trying to remind myself is that this is less impressive weight-wise than a chin-up body weight would have been at the start of the diet. That was harder than I wanted it to be. But the hope is that being semi-aggressive with loading on those will actually let me start touching, getting more stronger, not just more better at reps. And I still think that the way that I'm training pull downs will have carryover to my chins, but that's because I'm being so specific in the elevation, protraction, and then depression, retraction, intent. When I am training the pull downs, and on a GHR, no matter where you put the pad, because of the pad angle, it's going to be tricky to get that exact Nordic curl kind of demand going on. And I don't know why, but it feels like a single leg decline set up is what is calling my name right now. So we're going to do them. And Char Chuck's running the pink kettlebell. So I think I might have to step my game up. Glad I decided to load those. And yeah, I really don't know if I've bitten off more than I can chew right now. And there's only one real way to find out if I did, and that would be quitting right now. Because if I went home and ordered a freaking pizza, which I really want to do right now with how I feel, that would be a surefire way to 
not do what I want to do right now. So if I want to do what I want to do right now, the only real choice is to just keep doing it until it becomes absolutely apparent that I can't. So that is what we are going to be doing. And like, yeah, of course I wanted a bigger win on those sumos today. I thought I had a bigger win based on how the early ones fell, but I think that pulling the 280 as well as I did today, I can at least be okay with that for the circumstances and I can kind of use that to hope that things are going to be at least a little bit better once food gets brought back in. But that's what I got for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are looking for more in-depth help or a look at the actual how and the why behind what I'm doing or the how and why I coach lifters the way that I coach them, hop onto the Team Activity Community on School. It is a really awesome place where you can get insight into what I'm doing, where you can get help from other lifters, other coaches, motivation, support. Basically, I want to make it as good as having training partners can be on the internet because I think the biggest thing that I was really fortunate with coming up is I was always in good locations, whether it was back at the Strength Edge, when it was not even called Strength Edge, it was still called Smash Strength with Bryce and with Brian Salk and with the guys that got me started to moving to Florida and being around that normal community to being back here with the community that we have. I've always been so lucky to have the training partners that I do. And I think that if I can give lifters that don't have access to that access to a similar level of insight and support, they can start to figure things out better for themselves or at least faster than they would on their own. So that's kind of the whole bing bang boom behind why I think school is really freaking cool. So hop on if you want to, don't if you don't. Have a good night.